we actually get the black pieces against the 1914 player we're gonna be going for the french defense and uh, we do see the f4 french reach i actually think it is not as bad as many people think it is um, because if you're trying to simplify your repertoire as white i think this could definitely be a thing playing with f4 against uh, everything against the sicilian and so on uh, but it is a little bit inferior i'm not gonna lie we're gonna be getting the knight to f5 and he might be trying to set up something with like d4 even though d3 i think it's like better as a setup in this particular line of the french so now what we have on the board it's pretty much like a sicilian defense um and i don't really want to confuse people here because we started as a french but uh, now we actually get into more of like a grand prix kind of territory uh, or like close sicilian uh, but yeah i'm just gonna be playing bishop to e7 and um, i'm thinking to develop my bishop to b7 and then castle long perhaps so uh yeah that's the idea i'm gonna play in queen d7 castle long and on bishop to d2 i think queen d7 in some lanes could be okay as well i don't really love the fact that we might be getting hit with knight b5 so just gonna go there idea to castle long and might be looking forward to break with like f6 in some positions i'm not sure we'll see he also play d4 eventually but that will allow his knight to get back into the game does play knight b1 but he's losing like a lot of time in the process and now i can play d4 without him getting knight to c4 so i think that's perhaps an interesting idea and if he takes i think i can take with a knight uh, hitting the queen hitting the bishop he does play c4 but now this guy has been opened up so i think this is pretty okay news how do we actually play this i think f6 is like the right move if he takes that would be do, that would do me like a big favor he does not and uh, i can take on e5 and then play like g5 immediately I think that's actually a juicy idea because if he takes with the bishop with trade and then there will be like a knight e3 kind of move and i'm not gonna go for it immediately even though i can can definitely can do that but i'd like to play this move first getting in some pressure on g2 as well so expecting maybe like a queen d2 move and um that's play knight f3 but now knight e3 is coming really juicy not only hitting the queen but also the g2 square so i assume this is quite problematic for white and not gonna uh, take any stuff just gonna take there and uh, gonna be taking on knee five because knight takes there will be like rook e2 and then the bishop is actually opening up on the long diagonal so i think this might be actually quite precise does play b4 he can simply take and then he cannot take back because the queen will uh, will hang at the end of the line so uh, i think we're doing uh, very well in this position right now and his counter play is just way too slow on the other side of the board so i could just take back and yeah if he takes i'm gonna be taking his queen and he has not many pieces left to play with sadly so i'm just gonna be playing rook f8 the idea is to go like rook f1 next and if bishop g2 i can play like queen f7 but okay that just allows the mate i think that was a decent game my opponent i think played an interesting opening going for the f4 against the french and also i really liked the way he played uh, with like knight a3 i think that is fine the only thing that i would perhaps do maybe play a4 first trying to grab some space uh, on the queen side and that will also make it like uh, a little bit harder for me to castle because his attack would be like um, quicker so uh, yeah knight a3 is still fine though if he combines it with like knight c2 in this position i'm actually not sure why would you ever put your queen on c2 because this queen usually uh stays on like e1 uh maybe then to like f2 but queen on c2 was really like a weird move and uh, probably just bad because in hindsight this knight on a3 was just really sad after that it's pretty much like the samish knight that can never really get into the game so after queen c2 when queen d7 i've castled and on knight b1 i think this is actually like the perfect timing to get in uh, d4 because as i was saying like let's say he makes some kind of uh, random move i'm not sure if i'm supposed to go d4 now because the knight may activate with knight c4 but after he plays knight b1 uh then it gives me uh yeah just a very good chance to go d4 this time opening up this juicy bishop uh on the long diagonal and um 
yeah, this knight will not really come back into the game. Best move might have actually been knight a3 back to c4, but black is already much better. And I think f6 was okay. And then also like taking with g5. Because um, the thing is I could also play this move and then g5, but uh, I thought, well, there's no need to like prepare that and we can go for it immediately. And what we've got into the game... I could also start with knight e3, but I, I like to focus on the attack more. And I took and on king h1, we could do many things. Knight e5 was like the third move according to the engine with a minus 12. And also like playing queen g7 was perhaps a little bit better. There's like a very cute idea behind queen g7 because if opponent like plays b4, you can take and then queen g2 will be a very nice kind of thematic checkmate. Anyways, what I did was also... Perfectly fine. Uh, main trick was that I can take on e2. Bishop will open up. And this is just dead loss for my opponent. Because then I can play queen g7 and he uh, is getting made it. I think that was a pretty good game on my part. And um, yeah, the problem with my opponent's game was that he simply made this very silly queen c2 move that was pretty much killing his uh, his own knight and if he just plays like knight c2 let's say bishop to b7 and then goes like d4 i think we definitely have a position that is very double-edged it's um actually looks like a very decent version of the french for my opponent so perhaps i could start with d4 here just not allow him to get that uh, but honestly speaking like a lot of the black players may just remove bishop b7 and allow d4 so then it makes more sense to play this line as white uh, it's not like a great theoretical line but as i was saying it's like a nice way to simplify things like let's say if you play e4 and then they go c5 you can go for this f4 idea it works like against most of the openings you could do it against Karo and against everything if you're like a beginner trying to uh yeah play e4 and um not rely on that much fury you could do this you could also play like knight c3 g3 against uh, anything that's also a line that uh, i'm usually liking from white's perspective but uh, yeah i think that's um kind of already more than enough about this uh, this topic and we can jump into some uh, new games he plays e4 and we are gonna be going for the french defense once again and we do face the uh, c4 variation which is uh, wow, we're actually facing, uh, how is this called, like the Orthoschnap, or <laughs> what is this? Uh, well, I guess we'll just take the gambit. Uh, I remember looking at this at some point. I will just try to play like the most natural moves. I think Queen D7 is like very natural. I know this is like pretty bad, but um, yeah, this would be used to be like really... Uh, popular at some point for for white after Jonathan Schrantz made a video on it. Uh, yeah, I think we can take that pawn on d3. Although like, knight e6 coming into d4 looks crushing. I don't know, might be wrong. I don't necessarily know the fury against this. I know that uh, this is funny and it used to be like a YouTube trend with it, but the line should be like minus one for black, so shouldn't be like any serious. If he takes on e4. Instead of going for knight d4, which looks like really active and kind of nice, I might perhaps switch back to like positional play with knight a5, taking that bishop. He does go bishop b5, but this looks like really slow. I can just go like a6. He should give up the bishop, but I mean, what is white's play now? I mean, I'm just not only uh, up in development, but I'm also up in material, so I don't think that's like the most successful gambit ever we take but then we take on g2 as well just winning everything has to play queen f3 i think we actually just collect the bishop what am i even thinking about <laughs> okay you designs fair enough i think that was just like a, kind of a pretty bad opening by my opponent and i'm guessing the only move that i had to find was this knight c6 i'm still curious whether white can try like anything interesting after this, I went there, he played d3, and I went knight c6. And, well, honestly speaking, I was about to just play knight a5. And, yeah, go into this position. And after he trades, I was then thinking to go either c6 or like queen e6. I was thinking maybe this move. 
because I'm very happy playing this type of end games where I have the bishop pair and I'm just like slightly better. So yeah, it turns out it's like actually a little bit better to start with like knight c6 immediately with like knight d4. But I was like very familiar with this stuff and just played something that appeared as normal and yeah, we were winning <laughs> in like eight moves against this line, so that was good. Okay, gonna go for our next game and we do end up facing one e4 once again and we do face knight c3 which is actually going to be very interesting because we're going to be playing the uh, four knocks variation trying to trade off our bad bishop uh, of the french defense which is usually every uh, french defense player's nightmare and after he takes we are actually getting into some very interesting lines where uh, <clears throat> yeah i think we might be able to actually grab the initiative so uh, here it's critical to know that bishop g5 it's kind of losing, I think, after bishop f3, queen d2, and then queen takes on d4. Otherwise, you might just get your queen trapped. Sometimes it's like a typical motif. But on bishop to e2, I think we might be able to grab the initiative. Because uh, we'll have some ideas of like h6 and g5, I was about to mention. But he does go for this move. Um, trying to understand whether queen f5 or queen g6 is better. I'm assuming f5 because it looks more active. If he goes there, I think we take and we win a piece. And also, there's just a threat of taking on f3 and then bishop on g5 would drop. So, uh, I'm wondering whether g5 is like a good move or not. Probably not right now. It looks a little bit too quick right now, to be fair. I think I'll just play rook g8. I'm wondering whether rook g8 or h6 is better to start with in this position. Um, if I go g5, knight g5, perhaps I like that after like rook g8, I don't know. I think it's like really interesting, let's see. Let's play bishop g3, but now we just want a tempo because we had, um, yeah, we could just play it immediately without uh, preparing it. And uh, now it's a good question whether we take on g3 or not. I think if we take, he might take with the f pawn and we might not have that big of an attack. And for this reason, I think I'll start with... Uh, h5 it's a good question what happens if he goes like bishop to d3 because i think we'll just have to step back with a queen on like f6 and um, yeah just keep the tension he takes i think we can just take on bishop d3 just uh, step back with the bishop he does go c4 maybe intending to go d5 e d5 knight d4 so it's definitely something that we need to uh, seriously consider i'm thinking whether it makes sense to take there could also play like g4 uh, knight h4, maybe queen like g5. That could definitely be a thing. I think I'm gonna go for it because I kind of doubt that he's very safe opening up that diagonal. I'm not seeing anything clear for the time being, but I think this is definitely very scary in the future. Just gonna play like knight f6, I think. Like, imagine we could teleport this knight to, like, h3. It would be, like, an immediate checkmate. That would be kind of the dream scenario. I still haven't really seen how to come up with that just yet, but... Uh, hmm, could go for this check. I think taking is okay, though. And after he takes... Perhaps I could start with, like, rook g8. Idea to take the knight. Could also play knight e4. Um... 94 looks also quite interesting with like knight g3 maybe in some positions i think i like rook g8 though he has to take on c6 i'll take oh i'm actually running out of time how how does my opponents always end up having two minutes and i have 20 seconds <laughs> I, i'm still struggling to understand this process so he does go before but uh, we actually get to take the knight uh, and actually if we manage to take on g3 it will be a checkmate so yeah he does play queen there. Uh, I think I'll try to go king d7, defend the spawn. And if he takes, we might be mating him. I hope. Uh, no! <laughs> Jesus Christ, I wanted queen e4. <laughs> this is so bad. This is so unbelievably bad. Can we go for like the perpetual though? No. This is unbelievably bad. <laughs> okay, we might still save it though. I think this is maybe, yeah. 
I just can't make any moves, man. It's like unbelievable. And to actually go for it. Wait, what is he doing? <laughs> no way, man. He just gave me that. Okay, we just got it. <laughs> I could have gone for the perpet there, but uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I, I could really like go for it against this dude. <laughs> I don't know. But like, man, I mean, just go. Ah, uh, that was like so bad. I could go. In this position, I wanted to play queen there. <laughs> it's just game over. And I mouse slipped queen g4, man. That was like so, so crazy bad. Um, Well, I'm curious whether this was mating or not. Like, if he takes, I was assuming it's mating, but I couldn't really figure it out. So, like, he goes there, I go there. Yeah, it's mating, like, by force. Then we go there, and it's, it's like, mate. That was, like, okay. And the game overall, I think we got, like, a good position. Uh, we could go for the analysis tab. See what happened. And... Yeah, I think we got like a very decent opening version. Queen f5 was okay. G5, uh, I mean, I'm afraid this chess.com engine might not really understand the potential behind that. Because if you look this up with like stronger engines like Lila, I think it's really gonna feel Black's play in, you know, uh, in like longer term after we play Rook G8 move. And then just play there. Went H5. It's still like not that clear. I was expecting this to be better for black, but it's not. What he did was also good with f3. Yeah, I mean, he's just supposed to take one c6 and play queen f3, and that is somehow completely winning. Yeah, he totally missed the threat that he's taking one c6. So this, this opponent actually played very well for like the most of it, despite the fact that he has blundered. Could take one d4, that was better. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously better, but I, like, had no time at this point. <laughs> Play king d7, and then I took on g3. <laughs> Holy smokes, I played queen g4. Then I actually, like, went for it. <laughs> well, I was actually planning to take on f8 next. Uh, yeah, like, if he goes to h2, but he went there and, like, literally gave away all the pieces. It's pretty funny. Also, I had to dodge the who had like made in one. <laughs> had to dodge this check. That was crazy. Okay, so we do get uh, another game with the black pieces, and uh, we'll be getting another uh, French. And after d5, I'm gonna be taking, and we do end up getting another exchange variation. And I'm just gonna be playing with a long castle this time. I really enjoy playing that line. I think it's really leading to exciting chess. And even though we are in the exchange French, you could still get uh, yeah exciting games. So here, I think we'll actually do something pretty clever. We force him to play a3. And if you understand what the game plan is, you can take advantage of this move because we can go bishop e6 and. Uh, later on, our plan is to get in some kind of f6, g5, and then we can use this pawn as a hook, and it will kind of boost our play on the king side, if that makes sense. I'm gonna be making this f6 move. He plays queen e2, we can just go bishop f5. He does play knight f1, and we can simply uh, long castle. This is a very useful move, not only controlling e5 square, but also preparing uh, g5. He does go queen e2. Uh, I could go bishop f5, I'm a little bit unhappy about it because it allows him to take and then go queen e6. Playing bishop f7 would be like a little bit inferior the way I see it, but I think I'll just do it trying to avoid the queen trade. So he makes this move, gonna be playing king b8. The idea is to meet b5 with knight a5 and his attack will, uh, yeah, slow down uh, dramatically. So now we can start our own play. He does go a5, which is the uh, right order, and now there's actually like a big threat of him going b5. So for this reason, uh, I'm gonna go knight g6 because my knight will literally remain out of square. So the trick is now that on b5 we can actually read out the knight to e7, and then potentially switch it to like f5. And if he goes like b6, 
Then the thematic reaction is to take with the C pawn and then go A6. And it's going to be much harder for him to uh, break on the uh, queen side. Or he <laughs> might be jinxing me here, taking on A6. That's obviously like the uh, common plan for why to break through. I'm dealing with a checkmating frat. I have actually clicked on something weird. Uh, so I am dealing with this um, direct um, threat of mating in one and I think we can just play queen b7 and uh, at this point we will just try to pretty much survive and keep the extra piece and yeah win in the end game hopefully if we won't get mated but I don't really see uh, the mate for my opponent as he doesn't really have that many pieces close to my king so I'm just be just gonna be bringing this knight into the defense with knight c8 uh, not necessarily looking for to take that pawn on b6 because we might actually use that as a defensive shield and perhaps you know it could protect us from Maru coming into the b file so I don't necessarily want to take that but mostly to defend this square on a7 let's go knight e3 maybe he has like knight f5 ideas but I think we can just bring the rook idea to trade if he goes there and yeah let's see how he is going to continue the attack because uh what is this i mean that's just a free piece he does resign as well so um yeah that was just a little bit of a fail from my opponent trying to uh refute my setup and i think i showed this like uh, earlier into the speed run that you can go for this reaction when they are trying to attack you this is like the best thing that you could go for uh, again you could go bishop h5 as well but um i thought bishop to e6 is like a little bit more to the point here I'm just keeping an eye on the h3 pawn and after rook e1 i went for this move went f6 which is uh maybe not the best but generally it's a nice thematic move to have because if i castle long uh, I was kind of afraid of going him going b4. So I started with this and after knight f5, I think it's just uh, better now. It's a better version with his knight being uh, away from uh, from my queen side. Because with the knight on d2, if he plays b4, then the knight could potentially come in via b3 and then uh, c5. So um, he goes queen e2 now, which is like a little bit slow. He should really rush play on the queen side with like b4. Probably I would have played something like... King b8, I'm assuming, he does go like a4, I go g5, and we get something very similar to what happened in the game after b5, and then uh, knight e7. But he went queen e2, and this slowed down the play a bit. I could definitely go bishop f5, and I know that is the, the best move, and it was better. But I was just trying to avoid the potential simplifications after queen e6. I kind of felt that the end game should be more pleasant for me after something like... Uh, let's say trade and king d7 rook into e8 next but uh, i wanted to keep the game a little bit more exciting and that's why i went bishop to f7 trying to keep more pieces on the board and hopefully we can get more of a double-edged fight and on b4 i went king b8 that's usually how the game plays out i went g5 a5 and now uh, you have to watch out for this big frat because if you just waste the move then he can play b5 and this knight is literally trapped on c6 so for this reason i played knight g6 creating a square for this guy on e7 and now he went for like the most natural move he went b6 and then then i took apparently it's inaccurate to take uh which is pretty funny because this is like the standard reaction to just go for uh, uh for a6 but um, turns out it was better to actually just ignore it and go uh, h5 with the idea that if he takes obviously we're not going to be taking even though that's doable as well we can just go king a8 and try to use his pawn as a shield but also if he like takes on c7 uh we can take back with a queen and yeah there's not like an obvious way for him to use the b file as for example rook b1 uh can simply be met with uh, both queen takes on a5 or uh, the safer king a8 move sidestepping the b file and uh, then we are ready to actually launch our own play so actually h5 was better also if they go like a6 uh, it's important to not take uh, with the a pawn because you might be getting mated and uh, in this lines because there is this bishop g6 and queen coming in 
So it's just best to take with a C pawn now and after pawn takes uh, on, on B7, you don't really need to take that even though you could, but you could just start your initiative right away with G4 and it's already uh, quite unpleasant for, uh, for white to play. So in the game, I did an inferior move. I took and then I played a6, kind of autopiloting. He went bishop takes on a6, which was actually correct if he takes with the rook. Apparently that's very bad for me. And if I play like knight c8, defending against rook a7, he can simply play bishop e3. And I'm getting kind of crashed here on queen b7, thinking whether he can play this move. And yeah, it's just looking really ugly. Like he can simply even go rook a8 immediately or something even more annoying queen a2 and then rook a8 and yeah this would have been giving him a winning position which is kind of the risk of playing this line but uh yeah he was unable to find like the precise moves and after i got this nice c8 move i'm quite safe i'm not necessarily better because my king is still uh, pretty vulnerable but practically speaking white has no obvious threats and yeah he just sort of panic here he could still play like bishop to d2 and the position remains quite complex um, i'm apparently supposed to take and then play bishop to c7 and that is um, kind of a solid setup for black um, on the queen side but uh, yeah in the game he just gave up the free piece and i was happy to take it and then he resigned we do get the black pieces against the 1920 uh, almost and we'll try out the French defense, see whether we can get into some main lines. And again, people just take on d5, man. This is like really, really crazy. Uh, yikes. Uh, you know what? We'll actually try out a bit of a funnier line going for the isolated queen spawn against the, the French, uh, the exchange French. This is like another pretty normal way that, that you can play as black. It's definitely perfectly fine, but you need to feel comfortable playing these positions with the um, isolated uh, queen spawn. So I think I'm pretty comfortable. Haven't really played them in a while. Uh, yeah, this is a bit of an annoying move, to be fair. Like, uh, it's annoying because normally I'm looking forward to do something like, um, let's say I go a6 and uh, then I want to be doing this. Bishop's coming in. Uh, queen goes to d6 and then we like create this battery but not gonna be working that well because he can double my pawns so I'm, I'm thinking whether actually i should just play bishop to e7 and break that pin forever i think that might be like an effective way to deal with his bishop g5 kind of move even though yeah it's not forced i'm wondering whether he's preparing to set up the battery himself that would be pretty funny trying to beat me with my uh, with my own ideas. I think I'll just play rook c8 because on queen e3, I think there's like a g6 move with bishop f5 ideas. Yeah. Um, okay, I think yeah, I'll just play g6. There's no, not that much of an alternative at this point and I'll probably have to play bishop e7 later on with like knight e4. It's a bit of a pity because I don't get to show like the main setup in the isolated queen spawn, but uh, it's okay. Like it's definitely a playable position and he might have just uh, blundered now because the bishop is uh, unable to be defended <laughs> pretty much. So we just got like a free win. Takes on f6, but we can just recapture and he has like the same issue or maybe he doesn't like... Um, if I take, he actually has a plan. Plan is that he can take on d5. Then if I take on c2, he takes on c5. Is that a good plan though? So I can take on d3, he takes on d8, I can take on uh, f1. He takes and then I take back and I'll be up the exchange. So I think that's actually like best line. I don't see like a good move on queen f6, queen d5. So for this reason, I'm just going to go safe, take on d3 and collect the exchange. I could take there, but we're going to be having equal material. So uh, why would you go for that when you can um, just collect the exchange and he plays this move. I'm actually, yeah, I'm just going to play bishop e2, threatening to uh, trade and should be like a technical win from now. Could break with d4 if he allows it once again. He does not, but now my rook infiltrates. Bishop and pawn is hanging. He's not mating me, so yeah, that was a good try though. <laughs> I'm gonna play in h5. Now the pawn on f2 will hang as well. Let's play knight e3. 
I will just take this. Can't I see for? But I can take another pawn. Rook e8. Now knight is under attack. I think just for the sake of simplicity, I might take one e3. Although this is better. Take next. I have only 20 seconds left, so I should speed up a bit. I think this is like a funny tactic with like rook c3. <laughs> That's actually nice. It does not take, but he should be getting mated soon, I guess. So rook f3, king there. Where is the mate? I think there will be some kind of mate. I don't quite see it. But I'm guessing if we get knight f5, should be mate. Yeah, and th there was like another cute one. Like if he goes bishop, then bishop e7 is mating. So that was another kind of cute uh, trick that I had. Um, talking about this game and the line that I just went for when I played the c5 move, well, this is definitely like a playable line. Black does not really have um, any worries in it, to be fair. Also like against bishop to d3, like if he starts knight f3, c5, I think this might be like a better version for white with like bishop b5, but still I think he can play it this way. Uh, problem with c5 is that they can go bishop to b5 check in one go, but if you go like knight f6, bishop d3, uh, then I think c5 is definitely a playable line here if you are really into the isolated queen spawns position. So uh, let's say if you are um, like an Alapin player with a white or um, yeah, some guy or some person that uh, plays the isolated queen spawn regularly, you could really go for this variation against the uh, exchange French if you uh, feel more comfortable rather than the uh, crazy lines that I usually played in the speedrun where we just go for the uh, long castle lines. So these positions are uh, definitely full of life and um, yeah on knight f3 I've castled, he castled, I went knight c6 c3 and perhaps I could start with like knight e4 that would have been better because I played like this kind of standard bishop e6 move but it turns out to yeah not be ideal perhaps even start with like queen d6 because uh what i was really trying to do in the game was let's say something like this i play um could even go bishop a3 by the way now with queen g3 that's like a very nice motive that you need to be aware in these lines because on like knight h2 uh the bishop will drop and if the bishop won't drop then you still get like very decent attack with like bishop d6 and on f4 um uh, yeah, you could take the bishop, but again, like a move such as knight h5 will always be kind of annoying to deal with. And yeah, queen d6 is like a great move in, in those positions with ideas of taking. I was just not like very familiar with them and I was planning to do it on like the next move, but I wasn't in time because he played bishop g5. And I was actually thinking to play bishop to e7 just to break that pin. But um, yeah, I thought it shouldn't really worry about it yet. I went for g6 and apparently this is better for white slightly if he just plays queen d1, which is like a bit of an odd move to me. But after knight d2, yeah, it was pretty much it about this game. There was not much going on after rook e2. There was this kind of cute tactic that I went for at the end. Totally unnecessary, but kind of funny. Take on f2, and then if he takes, point was rook c3, and I do end up taking his rook at the end, which was pretty funny. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch another one from the French Defense uh, Rating Climb, or if you're looking for something for the white pieces, uh, then there is another video about the uh, London system. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you around on the channel. Take care.